and Sam. And we are Love to Hate. Back again with another preview video. This time we have Space Dinos from Payotal Games. Space Dinos is an abstract strategy game in which you take your dinos and put them in outer space. Uh, kind of a quirky little theme there. Uh, it's currently running on Kickstarter right now, so we're going to make sure to put a link to the Kickstarter campaign in the description of this video. You can check it out after you watch this video. Uh, we do want to also make sure to let you know that everything that you see in this video, all the art and components, are prototype, and so the final product will look differently once it's released. Let's go ahead and take a look at what Space Dinos looks like on the table. All right, so I have Space Dinos on the table. So let me show you how this game works. Space Dinos is a tile-laying abstract strategy game. And uh, essentially what you're going to be doing is at the start of the game, you're going to flip over one of these tiles after shuffling them all up and dealing out four tiles apiece to all the players. And you're going to set this tile in the middle of the playing area. Now each of these tiles are going to have a number of stars on them of differing colors. There's six different colors and uh, numbers of stars one through six on each tile. So if you do the math there, that's 36 different types of tiles in the game. And uh, on your turn, you start every turn by rolling this D6, and the number that you roll determines the type of tile that you can play from the ones that are in your hand, uh, or where you might place one of your dino tiles. And so the number that you roll tells you the type of tile you can play. So uh, that means the number of stars that are on a tile that you can play. So if I roll a four, I have to play a tile that has four stars on them. Like this one right here has four stars. Now, when you place a tile, you can cannot place a tile adjacent to another tile that is of the same color. So I can't do that because they're both the same color. Uh, likewise, I cannot place a tile that has the same number of stars. Uh, those both have three stars. So I have to do something different here. Uh, and the tiles that I have, I would not be able to place next to that tile unless I spent some of my stardust. You start the game with six Stardust tokens, and what these do, for every one that you spend, you can adjust this number by one. So I could spend, let's say, two Stardusts to make that four become a two, and now I could play this two, this pink two, next to this yellow three. And that's how that works. Uh, the Stardust tokens also work when you are trying to place one of your dinos. And so if I wanted to do that, uh, let's say it's another turn on down the road and I rolled this four again, I could spend two Stardust tokens to place this dino on the two right here, the pink two. And uh, what you're doing when you place your dino, that's how you score points in this game. Uh, whenever you have a dino on a tile that is surrounded on all four sides by other tiles, and I know these aren't legal placements necessarily, um, just disregard that, but uh, once a dino is completely surrounded, you are going to score two points, and you could score a third bonus point if you have differing colors on all the four sides, and you'll score a fourth bonus point if they are different numbers as well. And you keep track of points over here on uh, this little score guide, the scoreboard. Uh, starting right here, you have one of your dino tokens and you just follow the dots all around the constellation and uh, this is the end right here. You most likely won't reach the end by the end of the game, although you might, uh, but whoever gets the furthest along this track is the winner. Now back over here um, to scoring, uh, you, like I mentioned, you get points for whenever you surround a dino. You also get points for whenever you complete a row or column. Now, you play on a 6x6 grid because, again, there's 36 tiles, and 6x6 means there's 36 open spots. And whenever you complete one of those rows or columns, you are going to score points for all the dinos that are in those rows or columns. For whoever closes out the, that row or column, placing the last tile in that spot, they are going to get two points. Uh, then you look and see if there are any dino tiles in either that row or column. And uh, you're going to look at the differing tiles. Again, if there are 
uh, differing numbers, all different numbers, one through six, uh, then that's going to get you bonus points. If there are differing colors, all of the six different colors, that's going to get you bonus points. If you don't have either one of those, you're just going to score two points per dino that you have in that row or column. Otherwise, you might get four or eight points, depending on if you had differing numbers or differing colors. Those are some of the things you can do on your turn. Some other things you can do if you don't have any tiles that you want to place out there, you can exchange them for new ones from the draw deck. You can also forego your turn to draw two Stardust tokens, or you can purchase one of these fancy bonus tiles over here. Each one of these costs four Stardust, and they do different things like set phasers to stun allows you to play two tiles at the same time. Captain's Log allows you to take off two tiles that are already on the board. Um, and Mind Meld lets you make a request of a particular type of tile from another player, and they have to give you a tile if you make the request of one that they have. And uh, Tractor Beam allows you to move some things around. So that's what that, that those tiles do there. The game ends as soon as you placed the 36th tile and completed the 6x6 grid, or there are no more valid placements left for, none, for any of the players at the table. At which point, that is the end of the game. You look back over here, you see who has traveled the furthest through the galaxy, and they are the winner of Space Dinos. All right, we're back. And now we're going to talk about our thoughts on Space Dinos. Uh, Sam, what did you think about Space Dinos? I liked it. It was definitely an easy game to learn and to understand, but it wasn't too easy to where it was boring. Um, it, it was fun. You had to have some strategy, but at the same time, you didn't have to always know exactly what you were doing. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think it was definitely a game in which as it envelops, uh, develops, excuse me, uh, that you start to see that you got to think about things more in detail as the game goes on. At the beginning, you can just kind of throw things out there and see what happens. But as you start to see, oh, if I go there, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to block things off for my opponent there. Uh, however, if I go here, I'll score a lot of points. And so there are some choices that you have to choose from uh, as the game starts to develop. Um, Sam, you really like abstract games, games yeah. that kind of, you know, don't have a whole lot of theme. Is this one that you feel like fits right in that, that niche? Yes, I do. I like puzzles. I like, you know, the abstract thought that goes into games like this. Um, I'm not a big theme person. The theme of this game is fun. It's cute. I think our kids would really enjoy it, especially our eight-year-old. Um but yeah, it definitely fits into my type of game. Yeah. Um, what did you think about the uh, getting to roll the die and having the die kind of influence your turn and what you could do on that turn? I mean, you can you can manipulate it a little bit with those uh, the the um, stardust. stardust. Excuse me, I wanted to call it space dust. Uh, you can manipulate it a little bit, but for the most part, that kind of kind of curtails whatever strategy plans you might have for that turn. What did you think about that? Um, I thought it was, I mean, it's an interesting way to to have each turn. Um, it was frustrating when you didn't have the right <laughs> cards and then when you didn't necessarily need Stardust, but there was enough options to where you weren't stuck. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, there's There's plenty of options you can do on each turn to still keep a strategy going, to still keep uh, an idea of what you want to try to accomplish going. In so many games, you can kind of find yourself wasting turns just because of how the game is made and how it's designed. You don't really have that as a problem in Space Dinos because uh, if you aren't able to play a certain tile uh, that round because, say, your opponent blocked you off or uh, the space you wanted to go is no longer available, well, you can always play a dino and maybe open yourself up to getting points that way. Uh, if you don't have any dinos left, then maybe you take this time to purchase that, uh, that uh, special tile that you had your eye on the entire time. Or maybe you exchange out your bad tiles that you don't want to play anymore for, for other tiles that are better for you. So there's something you can always do each turn, and I appreciate that with space dinos. 
Uh, Sam, is this one that you think works well with non-gamers? Oh yeah, for sure. I think a lot of times abstract games can work with non-gamers because um, because of the lack of a, a huge overarching theme. Um, I think most people have done puzzles, and so that's just a natural next step for a lot of people. So I, I really think this would be a good one. It, it's easy to understand. Yeah. Uh, for me, this kind of has a uh, Quirkle feel to it. If you're familiar with Quirkle, it's kind of one of those uh, games you can find at Target, mass market games, that we really enjoy yeah. Quirkle. It's one of our favorite games to play with our, ki our kids because... Uh, of placing the tiles. This is a tile placement game and uh, looking at all the different options on the table and trying to pinpoint what the most uh, advantageous placement for you that time is. Uh, and that may be placing a tile, that might be placing a dino. And uh, the die again kind of ma manipulates your, your strategy with each turn. And so it's an interesting twist on it. It's one that I enjoy, and it's one that I think a lot of people out there will enjoy. Uh, that is Space Dinos from Payola Games. Uh, and uh, I think uh, this is one that we would say is a good game to bridge the gap between gamers and non-gamers. And that's what we do here on Love to Hate. All right, I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate. We'll catch you next time.